seen weirder places to hide a sword. Dora Gorge, Dora Dora Jajone, Tajajomana Ratejeno Voseshita. Zelda Mega Mode. Zelda Mega Force. Green. Now I'm ready. too many weapons. Hello there heroes, I'm the Orange Ranger and welcome to another Power Rangers Ninja Steel hiatus video. I may be the Orange Ranger, but today I'm here to talk to you about a hero clad in green, Link. Or whatever you choose to name him. The latest Legend of Zelda game took the world by storm and I was no exception. So today I'm here to give you my thoughts on Zelda Breath of the Wild. I thought I would start things off by telling you all my history with the Legend of Zelda series. I have played most of the mainly console Zelda games, and I've enjoyed all the ones that I've played. I am old enough, I'm not afraid to admit, that my first Zelda game was actually the first Zelda game, The Legend of Zelda for the NES. That shiny gold cartridge holds a lot of nostalgic memories for me. I highly doubt that I actually beat it all those years ago, but I did recently go back and play it, and I beat it 100% with the help of a walkthrough. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda is an interesting game by today's standards, but when you look at the console that it's on, it is amazingly deep and complex. I have some incredibly vague memories of having played Zelda 2, but I didn't enjoy it. Zelda 2 was a radical change to the formula, becoming far more RPG based and changing combat to a side-scrolling style. I remember kind of being really confused while I was playing it and I didn't play it for very long. My return to the Zelda series was with A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo, which to this very day is my favorite Zelda game. Yes, that's including Breath of the Wild. It's just the perfect advancement of the original game to a better system and it's just such a great mixture of ease of play and complexity. It's a game that I can pick up and play anytime and still enjoy it. I've beaten it at least five times. From there probably comes the most beloved of the entire Legend of Zelda series, Ocarina of Time. OOT is a really great game, another case where Nintendo just pushed the hardware, the Nintendo 64, to the absolute limit. The visuals haven't aged well, but it's another really deep and complex game. It does have some rather serious flaws, as best detailed by Aaron Ego Raptor Hansen in his excellent sequelitis video comparing A Link to the Past with Ocarina of Time. But despite those flaws, it's still a great game that I can enjoy anytime. But truth be told, when it comes to the Nintendo 64, I actually prefer the sister game of Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. Majora is the black sheep of the Zelda family. No Master Sword, no Ganon, even Zelda herself is barely in it, seen once in a flashback. The Mask gameplay, which you do see a little bit in Ocarina of Time, is a great variation to the overall scheme. 
and it tells a dark, mature story that just feels a little bit deeper than you get in standard Zelda fare. To this day, uh, Majora's Mask is probably still my second favorite Zelda game, just behind A Link to the Past, and just ahead, yes ahead, of Ocarina of Time. GameCube brought us The Wind Waker, which is another fantastic Zelda game. People were actually really upset with The Wind Waker at first due to its cartoonish art style, but it's just like I said about Kamen Rider Gaim last time. Put that stuff behind you, focus on the story, and it's a fantastic game. And as a matter of fact, the cartoonish art style takes Link, normally an expressionless and emotionless hero, and gives him a personality. It makes him one of the more beloved versions of Link, and it's the reason that Toon Link is used as a separate character in games like Smash Brothers and Hyrule Warriors. The Wind Waker recently got an HD remake on the Wii U, so if you haven't played it yet, I would definitely recommend picking it up. The Wii had Twilight Princess, which I think is actually quite underrated as a Zelda game. It has a darker, kind of grittier style to it, but it has a pretty good story and I think it's definitely worth playing. Later on though, the Wii got its very own Zelda game, since Twilight was shared with the GameCube, in Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword is an incredibly divisive Zelda game. The reason for this divisiveness is the game's focus on motion controls and the fact that it feels very formulaic, two things that some people enjoy and some people don't enjoy. I happen to think the game was pretty good, and actually Chugga Conroy recently did a full Let's Play of it if you'd like to see how that game works over extended gameplay. And by the by, I never actually finished Skyward Sword because my Wii literally died in the time that I was playing it. But while I was playing it, I remember thinking it was pretty okay. And that, dear friends, brings us to the subject of today's video. Nintendo was developing a brand new console, the Nintendo Switch, and knew that a brand new Zelda game would be a great thing for it to have on launch day. Though they also knew they'd be sharing that game with the Wii U because development of the game started on the Wii U. But they could also sense the frustration of some of the series' hardcore fans who were going kind of unsatisfied over the past couple of games. So, for perhaps the first time since Ocarina of Time, the series was taken a very hard look at and some major changes were made to the formula. Some of those changes I loved, some of those changes I didn't love so much. So, let's take a dig into the Breath of the Wild itself. So what do I really like about Breath of the Wild? The main thing is the size of the map and just the scope of the game in the open world. This map is absolutely huge, by far the largest ever played in a Zelda game. And one of the things that I really like about it is how you can encounter kind of random things. Other Zelda games feel really scripted in that anything you encounter in the world, even if it's off the beaten path, ends up having something or other to do with the primary story. In Breath of the Wild, you can encounter enemy camps that don't have anything to do with anything. It's just something for you to take out and get some more supplies. I like the idea of changing out finding random hearts to eating food for health. I think that's a much more realistic way of gaining health. And another thing I like about that is you can actually choose whether Link is a vegetarian or a carnivore. And I mean, it's not a back or forth choice, I just mean by what you eat. So, actually, Link can even have cheat days. Heck, I was even checking while I was writing this script, and it turns out that vegan and vegetarian runs are a challenge that players are taking on for this game. That's really cool. It's also really cool that vegans and vegetarians that play this game aren't going to feel left out, because they definitely would if you were required to hunt animals and eat meat in order to regain health. The shrines and dungeons in the game are all incredibly tough, with really hard puzzles that make you think. The four divine beasts are all worthy dungeons in their own right, making you really rack your brain and think about how to get through to the end. Heck, there are even some aspects of just traveling through the overworld that are fun and creative. On a semi-related note to that, I love that mountains no longer provide a direct obstacle to your path, steering you on the way you have to go. This map has no predetermined paths. If there's a mountain range in between you and where you're going, you can climb that sucker. If there's a lake or a river in your way, take a swim. 
Oh, and the joyous fun of that paraglider. It's so much fun to find the highest point that you can possibly find, jump off, and just see how long it takes you to glide to the ground using that thing. There's actually even a mini game that's based on it. And Breath of the Wild, of course, has a really fantastic story and does great things for the character of Zelda herself. For the person that these games have been named after, Zelda is often kind of an afterthought in these games. Yes, sometimes she is active and out there, but often you'll notice that that is as another character. Breath of the Wild gives you an active, engaged Zelda who is both strong and vulnerable and is a character that you end up really feeling for as she deals with the struggle of living up to her expectations. However, no game is perfect and Breath of the Wild does have some downsides. The biggest downside to the game for me is that it tends to get a little too far away from some of the tropes that has made the series what it is. For example, the Master Sword is not even necessary to complete the game. As a matter of fact, in many circumstances, it's not even the strongest weapon you can have. It is the most durable because it repairs itself, but it is not the strongest. You can only get Link's famous horse, Epona, by using an amiibo. Seriously? I mean, I get that they've opened up the horse aspect of the game. There are herds of wild horses all over the place. You can catch them, train them up, register them, find the best ones, and get yourself a really good horse. Yes, I get all of that. But you should not have to buy something special to get Epona. Epona is Link's horse. The Hylian Shield is literally tucked away in a basement somewhere in Hyrule Castle. There is a side quest that ends up with you being able to purchase one, but I think you have to have already seen it first. The Triforce is barely even mentioned. It's not even really a part of the story. It's just kind of a thing that happens to exist. You don't have to find it. You don't have to protect it. It's just there. I don't think it's good story to minimize series aspects like this. I understand the idea of playing the game your way, but the Master Sword should be important. The Triforce shouldn't matter. But in my mind, none of that compares to what they did with Ganon. Ganon, or Calamity Ganon as he's known in this game, is a non-entity. He's just a big cloud of evil that becomes something that you fight. The Zelda series talks about the idea of iterations, manifestations. Link, Zelda, and Ganon are more than just people. They're iterations of courage, power, and wisdom that continually manifest and reincarnate throughout history. But this time, while Zelda is an actually complex character, and Link is, of course, the player avatar, Ganon seems to just be the manifestation. He's not an evil character, he's just evil itself. Evil characters are usually deliciously evil, characters you love to hate. But you can't hate this Ganon because he's not a person. He doesn't have wants or desires or motivations. He's just a big black pig cloud. It's just, oops, the alarm went off, the seal has been broken, and Ganon just eviled all over the castle. Somebody go grab a mop. Also, while the four beast dungeons are admittedly fantastic, and the sheer number of shrines seems like it would add up to enough to compensate in the dungeon area, it doesn't. The core story feels like it wraps up very quickly, mainly because there are only four main dungeons. Five, if you count Hyrule Castle. I think that at least eight dungeons would be your bare minimum number for a big console 3D Zelda game. I actually would have been fine with them cutting back on the overworld somewhat and using that space to create more awesome dungeons. Alright, and this is a very minor thing, but it's something that actually bugged me. In the game world, at nighttime, you can encounter Stalfos that are riding horses, appropriately named Stall Horses. You are able to knock the Stalfos off of their rides and ride them yourselves. You can ride a giant skeleton horse! This is awesome. All right, game. You won't let me have Epona without buying something extra, but I can sure as heck have Ebona. Except that I can't. Because the game will not let you register stall horses. 
I mean, come on, really? It's actually an accomplishment getting a stall horse tamed so you can ride it. But you can only keep it until you get to where you're riding or you have to teleport somewhere. I just want a nice stable for my Ebona with some nice hay that she can eat and have fall out of her bones. I'm not asking that much. She deserves at least that. As passionate as I can sound when I'm talking about cons, as much as my voice will raise, I still think this is a fantastic video game. The only thing these cons make me question is whether or not you can call it a fantastic Zelda game. I still wouldn't say it's my favorite. I still say A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time. Oh man, that's three already. Top ten Zelda games? I guess it's going to happen eventually. Well, in the effort to finish the hiatus videos, post-hiatus, we've got a top 10 video next time. I ranked rangers while they were wearing the spandex and rangers when they were not wearing the spandex, so now it's time to rank the in-between. Those flashy special effects laden sequences where heroes become the Power Rangers. The morphing sequence. Next time, I'll be telling you my top 10 Power Rangers morphing sequences. So, in the comments below, let me know your favorite Power Rangers morph. That's going to do it for another Power Rangers Ninja Steel hiatus video. Thank you folks so much as always for watching and your patience with me as I'm catching these videos up after the fact. Like the video by clicking that like button right down below. In the comments below, let me know what you thought about Breath of the Wild if you played it and what your favorite Zelda game is. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to see all my videos and ring that bell so you're notified of whenever I post new videos like this one right here. And if you'd like to lend a little support to the channel, digitaltipjar.com slash orangerangervid. Toss me a little bit of support and I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, heroes, may the power, wisdom, and courage protect you. Team Courage, da 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 or whatever you choose to name him. <sighs> so what do I really like about the Breath of the Wild? It's not the Breath of the Wild, it's just Breath of the Wild. If there's a mountain in the... Ganon, or Calamity Ganon as he's known in the series, no wants or desires or anything like that. I looked twice and I still don't have it. Ganon is not... Ugh. Evil characters are usually deliciously evil. Farts! I'd still say Majora's Mask. Uh, Major no, I like to Mask. Crap! Well, in the effort to finish another hiatus...